Welcome to Argument the Podcast. It's a podcast to discuss, deliberate and debate on several social, legal and political issues. In this series of the Argument the Podcast, we're going to be discussing about Kerala politics and you know, it just cannot be covered in, in just one episode. And it's so vast in its nature. So we have this in several segments. you can listen to any of the segments of of the series and it speaks about several facets of the politics which which ranges from 2019 to the upcoming election of 2021 so do stay tuned also if you're new to argumenta podcast you can tune in to argumenta podcast on spotify itunes anchor igtv youtube google podcast and other platforms as well do stay tuned Joining with us is Mr. Ravi Shankar. Uh, hello, sir. Hi, Joel. Uh, to all the listeners, hi. My name is Ravi Shankar. I'm actually a political analyst and an independent public policy and poll campaign researcher. I did my master from IIT Guwahati, and uh, right, I'm basically from Kerala. So I'm. Uh, I think I know a bit. of kerala politics uh, thank you so much uh, sir so so what we will be doing through this entire process trying to analyze the election as a whole especially with regard to the 2019 elections and uh, this podcast we will be uh, doing a mix in between here and there of, of uh, malayalam so uh, minaj do bear with us korchi uh, korcha malayalam we going to be going to korchi korcha ariyo joel korchu so we are going to be uh, de- we're going to be having a session on that but then most importantly uh, let's let's uh, jump into the 2019 election it was the year 2019 it was just uh, two years back and what we saw was a shift in the entire electoral uh, process we had uh, the bjp with, with a chest thumping victory in, in throughout the country but especially in the state of kerala what we saw was a complete shift uh, against the national sentiment we saw the udf coming into power and even the ldf which, which which is currently in the government today was barely able to make it in the uh, in the election as such but we saw the resurgence of of the of the nda uh, in in kerala especially so uh, what could be the the real reason behind it and is is that a beginning or, or a slight change in the mood of the people with regard to the same joel uh, when we are speaking about kerala kerala is a very peculiar state especially if you are thinking if you go back to history in 1977 the first election after emergency when throughout the country the entire country there was a wave against indira gandhi uh, in regard with uh, the emergency kerala was a very different state in kerala congress actually won 20 out of the 20 seats that congress had contested when indira gandhi herself lost the election in 1977 kerala showed a different thing by making congress win all the seats so kerala has a history of being a stand out in the election black uh, in, especially in parliamentary election you can see the same in 2004 2004 election was an election fought between an incumbent nda the first nda government and uh, the upa there was no U- formal upa before that but uh, what happened was that uh, when the entire nation gave full flung majority for uh, uh, congress congress was not able to win a single seat in kerala congress was just washed off in from in kerala when the rest of the country gave uh, a thumping majority for congress yeah so so the 2019 election like as a point out was, was a very clear uh, mandate especially when we had the shabrimala issue uh, in the backdrop and the left government got its fair, fair share of uh, criticism with regard to handling the entire case but what seemed to be that you know the the nda might get a little bit of an increase in the in the number of uh, the votes or, or at least they'd be able to uh, take in some seats you, you had the udf capitalizing on the entire uh, on the entire uh, m- m- moment in the election and there seems to be allegations of cross voting if i'm not wrong uh in 2019 you it's a very interesting it was a very interesting election for two reasons number one in 2018 the shabrimala verdict came uh, with, uh, from the supreme court which allowed uh, women of all ages 
to enter the Shabrimala temple. And LDF government uh, being said as very progressive, they were uh, actually trying to make that happen in Shabrimala. You have to understand that Shabrimala is controlled by the Devasam board, which is a government entity in itself. So they were trying to allow the entry of women and huge massive protests came from all flanks of Hindu society in 2018 uh, and BJP was, I mean, you would have even seen in televisions where BJP's then state president uh, was, uh, was stating the fact that this is the uh, Ayodhya that we were waiting for, this is the golden opportunity, the word golden opportunity was used by him and it was heavily criticized also at that time. So BJP was thinking that this is going to be an election where BJP is going to open their account. BJP has had has never won an account in uh, won a parliament seat in Kerala and they were quite sure that they are going to win an election in uh, win a seat in Kerala. Uh, number two, the that was one significant point. And number the second significant point was actually uh, the role of Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi, uh, apart from Amethi, he also contested in Wayanad. So the entire media, uh, the people of Kerala even thought that this is the golden opportunity for us to make a PM from our own state. So this is the first time a PM teacher candidate was contesting from the state. So that led to a, there was a clear Rahul Gandhi wave. I mean, it's weird to say even Rahul Gandhi wave because people just do not believe, but there was a clear Rahul Gandhi wave that happened in 2019, coupled with loss of votes due to uh, gain of gain of votes for UDF, as well as loss of votes for LDF, the left democratic front due to Sabrimala issue was the real reason why uh, Congress was able to win all the seats. Out of 20 contested seats, the, the UDF, United Democratic Front, uh, led by Congress and Muslim League and Kerala Congress money was able to win 19 out of 20. Like you rightly pointed out, I think the Sab Shabi Mala incident in 2018 was imperative to decide the, the trend that followed in 2019 in Kerala. And it's also stated that, you know, BJP thought they expected to get to expected to win in Kerala because there was so much Hindu mobilization in Kerala. So, you know, it seemed like they were going to win, but when they were whitewashed completely and when uh, you can literally say Congress ran away with the trophy, as you stated, it clearly turned out to be a very peculiar election. Yeah, in many ways, there was a Hindu consolidation that happened to the side of uh, uh, BJP in the state. But you have to understand that in many places, especially in Trivandrum, where uh, Sashi Tharoor was contesting against uh, former Misoram governor and uh, long-time RSS leader, uh, I mean, Vishu Hindu Parishad leader, Kumanam Rajasegaran. Kumanam Rajasegaran was no, no. supposed yes. to, I mean, all the pre-poll surveys said that Kumanam Rajasegaran will be winning the election. But what happened was that it, uh, uh, a huge minority consolidation hap happened in favor of Shashi Taru. And uh, you, you can see the voting pattern while if you are analyzing the voting pattern, pattern Wherever there are Muslim consolidated areas, the votes from those regions uh, actually fully, um, Shashi Thirur was able to garner 100% or 90% votes from those areas uh, where Muslims or uh, Christians were in majority. So while there was a Hindu consolidation, because of this Hindu consolidation and counter consolidation uh, with regard to Muslims and Christians also happened in Kerala. That was also a reason why uh, UDF coupled with, I have to, I mean, I have to be very specific, coupled with Rahul Gandhi effect was the reason why uh, UDF, the UDF was able to win 19 out of 20 seats. Uh, so, let's see, uh, we, like what we saw in, in Trivandrum and in other parts of Kerala as well with regard to the 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 Congress coming into power and the, you had the consolidation of the Hindu voters. So then, uh, wasn't it always that the, like, since we have the Nairs and the Irava uh, cast in the, in the Hindu, like, you always saw that the divide of the of the votes also among the community, especially, I think, from what wrong, the Nair used to always be, the, the, the Nair community used to always go along with the 
with the with the UDF or with uh, or, or right now is going along with the with the, with the BJP as such. But then, uh, but don't, don't you see that uh, there is some there, there is a specific uh, you can't say targeting, but there is a specific you know. Uh, uh, notice of, of some community that says in order to for a consolidation of votes, it's not like a complete consolidation of votes. If you can see, see if uh, complete consolidation, complete Hindu consolidation of what happens in Kerala, like in any other state, BJP will never have to look back. Uh, the total Hindu population is around 52 percentage uh, in Kerala. So if complete control, even 40 percent of uh, even uh, 90 percent of the Hindus or 80 percent of the Hindus. Hindu vote completely consolidate towards BJP, BJP will win, but that is never the case. Uh, Hindu votes, I mean, uh, if you are thinking uh, before 2014, you can see that the entire the vote share of BJP was around 3, 4, 5 percent. Above 5 percent, it was never have they gone above 5 percent. Maybe they have never touched 10 percent mark. 2014 was the first time when BJP was even able to touch that double digit mark in in Kerala. Uh, the fact is that uh, the Hindu votes, I mean, if you are analyzing the voting pattern, uh, you can see that Hindu votes have always been divided uh, between these two major uh, alliance or the fronts. Uh, always the upper caste, Nair, and a very minute percentage of Brahmin votes, they usually used to go to the Congress side and uh, the Irava votes who are the majority among the uh, Hindu population in Kerala that used to go to left side, uh, the left, left side. Iravas, that is why in 2000, just before 2016 election, around 2015 December, uh, BJP tried to play a different ball game there. Because if BJP wants to win in Kerala, they have to consolidate the Irava votes, which constitute to around 15% of the total population. They have to consolidate those Irava votes. So what they did was that uh, BJP, with the help of uh, BJP machinery, they made a new party with the name Bharat Dharma Janasena. It was an Irava. I mean, the president of uh, the party was... SNDP Yogam, that is Sri Narayana Dharma Paripalana Yogam, SNDP, yeah, which is the yes, organization, yeah. it, it is the uh, caretaker, you can say in double quotes, caretaker organization of uh, Iravas in the state. Uh, so SNDP Yogam's president, general secretary, Vellapalli Nadeshan was the patron and his son, Tushar Vellapalli was Tushar the president, Vellapalli, of the, yeah. president of the party. So they tried to make that, uh, uh, play that game and uh, in 2016, they were given substantial uh, seats in the, uh, and they were inducted into NDA. NDA Kerala is a bit different from NDA, uh, the, nas the na national NDA, NDA Kerala, we, which is having BD uh, BDJs was the biggest, second biggest party and uh, the biggest party was BJP itself. So they tried to make an alliance with uh, BD, they, they tried to make a party BDJs and try to garner the votes of Iravas via that. But to the, what 2016 showed us was that in all the constituencies where BDJ is con contested, NDA was able to get the votes of Iravas. But in all the constituencies where BJP contested, BDJ was not able to transfer the Irava votes to BJP. What that meant was the already voting uh, LDF left voting Iravas in BJP contesting places, they actually voted for uh, uh, LDF itself. On the other hand, some other, uh, on the contrary, in places where BDJs fielded their candidates, mostly they were Irava candidates. I mean, they were, they, they, the candidates were from all fronts of uh, Hindu society, but majorly they were uh, Irava candidates and uh, the this SNDP's uh, district secretary, uh, Taluk secretary, Taluk union secretary, uh, leaders like that were uh, uh, fielded by BDJs and NDA. The problem was that when these candidates were fielded by NDA and BDJs, the Nair votes 
whom who, those words which always used to go to in uh, nda or bjp when it when never transferred so that uh, it's a I mean, hindu unity bjp always feel that hindu unity is the way to uh, electoral success and that is true actually if uh, all Hind- the entire hindu population is voting for a one particular party obviously they will win because of the um, the sheer population majority but uh, in the peculiar in this peculiar situation that the the conversion of sheer number of votes never happened that is why this experiment was uh, a failure you have to understand that a party which garnered in 2016 around uh, uh, 3 to 4 percentage votes in the entire state in the just recently concluded uh, um, panchayat election the local body polls were able to only make one ward member win in the entire state with a vote share of around 0.001% so that that's hardly that's very negligible yeah like hardly i mean they, um, that is why i'm saying out of the tens of thousands of wards that exist in a the state they were able to win only one panchayat ward so where bjp uh, even though under all the uh, negative circumstances won around uh, 1500 wards each so so that's what happened so the hindu consolidation and these things were tried out if you if you remember correctly in 2019 when rahul gandhi was contesting in wayanad the nda candidate in wayanad was this tushar velapalli the president of bdjs so bjp didn't directly contest against rahul gandhi like they did in amethi with uh, 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 smriti rani smriti yeah, rani yeah, smriti rani like they did in amethi with smriti rani they didn't actually field the con- uh, candidate direct bjp candidate directly against but they gave that to uh, the the uh, tushar velapalli who was the president of bdjs even after that uh, he himself was not able to garner that much vote the the total consolidation didn't happen basically bjp was trying to get trying to win uh, three seats one trivandrum like we mentioned kumanam rajasekaran and uh, 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 shashi tharoor and the second seat was very important for bjp in the sense it was the seat of patanandatta where sabrimala temple exist yeah so in patanandatta yes. uh, patanandatta what oh, happened was the, that they won the pandalam seat right they won the pandalam seat in the in the local body election they won the pandalam uh, municipality, municipality. Uh, which is part of which is uh, which is uh, a municipality inside the patanandatta lok sabha constituency so in patanandatta even though they were able to uh, double the total votes that they have uh, they that they got in 2014 around in 2014 around 1.1 lakh votes were polled for bjp when uh, mt ramesh was contesting there now the state uh, the present state president and the hero of the entire uh, sabrimala agitation uh, surendran k surendran was contesting for bjp in uh, patanandatta and they got around 3 lakh votes 3 lakh votes but still they, that was not enough to make them win that particular seat i mean there is there is news of cross voting and uh, other things but uh, but but i feel that cross voting and other stuff are part of politics and if you want to really win you have to uh, cover that up also 